Welcome back to our video series, Demystifying 5G, brought to you by Roland Schwartz. In the recent videos, I introduced our 5G and our coverage measurement solution to you, targeting indoor and walk testing, uh, organized in, in a backpack. I told, showed you the hardware. I told you that the system is capable to taking measurements at FR1 frequency range up to sub six gigahertz and at FR2 frequency range up to in the millimeter wave frequency range, for instance, 28 gigahertz. Um, we are here lovely in lovely Munich in our uh, corporate headquarters. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in Munich, 5G and R is not yet being uh, deployed. So I need to emulate my 5G base station. And for that, I basically using the SMW 200A vector signal generator. Um, as you can see to the RF output, I have connected a horn antenna um, and I'm transmitting at, 20, at 28 gigahertz a 5G and R signal with 100 megahertz of bandwidth. And like explained in our recent video, I'm using uh, in the signal uh, 20 synchronization signal blocks out of the 64 possible ones. So now we wanna uh, show you that uh, we can actually measure LTE uh, uh, sub six gigahertz in conjunction with millimeter wave simultaneously because in uh, our uh, initial deployment um, of 5G, we're using the so-called option 3X. That means we need an LTE anchor. Uh, over the LTE anchor, the control and signaling information will be exchanged with the device. So we wanna scan here also LTE coverage um, uh, from our video studio and then measure 5G and R in parallel. For that, I already prepared um, a workspace. So we are basically remote desktop into our backpack solution. And I started uh, the Romus uh, drive test software. It's collecting the data. As you see here, I loaded GPS, and um, we are seeing here we are in a lovely Munich, uh, Ostbahnhof, so Munich East, Central sta uh, Munich East Station, um, where Roden Schwartz is uh, basically uh, located. Um, and uh, we will be sitting right here at the Mühldorfstrasse where Roden Schwartz headquarters is. So as you can see, I um, um, uh, loaded the LTE driver, I loaded the 5G and R driver, and um, all what we do basically is now uh, need to do is firing up the measurement, uh, which I'm doing here uh, quickly. So we need to wait for a GPS lock um, that should come in any moment now. Here we go. And now my scanner is basically starting uh, the measurements. So you can already see here, I'm measuring now 5G and R. Um, I organize it the way that uh, my SSB indices are basically uh, displayed here in a hierarchical order. Um, as you can see, uh, or if you count, it's 20 of them, but of course I'm not transmitting in any uh, of the fashion that I do go zero, one, two, three, four. I picked uh, certain ones and I can only uniquely identifying them, as you can see here, by decoding the master information block, which information I'm transmitting here, of course, um, for the uh, experts, there's much more in that than just the system frame number. Uh, subcarrier spacing and so forth. So you see here basically the uh, statical uh, configuration that my SMW uh, uh, puts out here. I'm able to decode that um, and uh, so uniquely identify my um, SSB indices. So you see we measure the obvious measurements, RSRP, SINR, RSRQ. I also have here uh, a detailed uh, slides that uh, could I add additional me measurements like measuring uh, on PSS, uh, uh, the RSRP, the RSRQ, the SINR, and so forth. That's another configuration step. But most importantly, we want to take a look here at the, at the right-hand side of the graph. You see here the bar chart, um, basically two bars. The one uh, uh, related to the uh, left-hand y-axis here showing RSRP, and the second bar uh, to the right-hand uh, y-axis showing the SINR. Below here you see basically now changing um, uh, numbers. Uh, 7 at 68, the last number is always the PCI that being detected and the first number is now the beam uh, indice, the SSB index uh, that's currently measuring and identified as the strongest. You see here per um, beam RSRP, SINR, RSRQ being um, um, shown. And if you count, um, that's 8, right? I told you something of 20, so do we only detecting 8? No, that's not the case, of course. So you can easily configure that in the software. So we have to go back. Uh, we can click here, uh, right-click, use properties, and then you see here basically the number of 
uh, beam indices that we want to show, we can easily increase that uh, to 20, and then we can determine if we want to uh, put the hierarchy on RS or PSI and R RSIQ. And as soon as I've done that, then of course my bar chart is there, and now you can see that we are uh, detecting a number of beams here um, uh, frequently. So um, another thing to show is basically um, uh, what happens if I'm blocking the signal. Um, that's easily done. I basically can put my hand in front of the horn antenna, and now as we're looking at the graph, uh, my signals are basically gone. If I take it away again, boom, here we go. My signal is basically back, and I can measure that, so it shows you that the scanner is able to pick up the signal again. So I told you we can also scan LTE in parallel. So where's that? So if we go back to our software, we have the uh, uh, tab here, LTE scanner. If we go into it, you see uh, uh, the same time that we measured 5G and R, we were measuring LTE in parallel. It's being detecting uh, the signals that are still being able to receive here in the, in the basement. Um, and that's the different carriers that uh, provide here services. So if we take a closer look quickly to uh, the LTE side, you see we identify here T-Mobile, Germany, uh, Telefonica, and Vodafone as uh, uh, carriers that are being sent here. And of course, if you look at that and see all yellows and red, I mean, uh, we're in the basement, so um, luckily the scanner is sensitive enough to still pick up the signal. So I hope you have seen here that we can easily measure both systems, LTE and 5G in R parallel. Of course, now I can also uh, set up a, a tab that measures 5G in R sub 6 gigahertz in parallel to that. That wouldn't be a problem, but that's probably uh, a topic for another video in our video series, Demystifying 5G.